All right, let's go to Ottawa now. Check this out. I am hoping that the election bill will be withdrawn. I think it has been uh, uh, demonstrated quite amply uh, by uh, experts uh, in Canada and around the world, uh, by uh, concerned opposition parties, by concerned Canadians, uh, that this is not about making elections fairer. It's about the Conservatives wanting to make it easier for people to donate money while making it harder for people to vote. That's Liberal leader Justin Trudeau a couple minutes ago demanding the government scrap what they call the Fair Elections Act. Tom Mulcair made similar remarks. The call comes as controversy mounts over the proposed electoral reforms. They include a plan to do away with the vouching system, a move critics say will prevent thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of Canadians from casting a ballot. Would the bill strengthen the integrity of Canada's electoral system as the government claims, or will it actually disenfranchise voters? This debate going on very urgently today as there is testimony in front of committee today by the former CEO of Elections Canada, Jean-Pierre Kingsley, who will join me here on Power and Politics. He, remember, gave the bill initially in A-. minus. Is he changing his grade? We'll find out as well. But let's get some MPs to talk about what they heard at committee today. Paul Calandra, Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, is here. David Christofferson is the NDP Deputy NDP Leader. And Kevin Lamoureux is the Deputy Liberal House Leader. Good to see all of you here. All, I've also got in studio with me David Brock. He testified in front of the committee today. He's the Chief Electoral Officer for the Northwest Territories. And he was here. Thanks for being here. And let me just start with you before we get to the MPs, Mr. Brock. Um, you testified from committee. Now, we've heard Mr. Meron, the CEO of uh, Elections Canada, he has a lot of criticism about the bill. Uh, you testified today. What are your key concerns about this bill? All right. Thanks, Evan. Uh, my primary concern is centered on two things. One is um, ensuring that we enable the rights of Canadians to exercise their right to vote. And the other one is ensuring the integrity of the electoral process overall, which means respecting the independence and impartiality of Elections Canada. Uh, on the right to vote, uh, I express my concern about the uh, purported repeal of, of vouching, the ability for one elector to, uh, s to s speak to the identity and residence of another elector, and in addition to that, the right of candidates or their representatives to examine the identification presented by those electors. I think that could be both, um, as I said, intimidating and inhibiting. In addition to that, uh, with respect to the independence of the Chief Electoral Officer, I have a concern that some of the provisions in the bill um, start to blur the relationship between uh, an individual who's an agency of Parliament and his responsibility is to Parliament as a whole and not to the executive, not to the government. And some of the provisions seem to uh, introduce a stronger uh, relationship between um, decision-making by the government and the ultimate uh, abilities of the Chief Electoral Officer. So your concerns here are about the vouching, getting rid of vouching, which the government wants to do, and the independence of the Chief Electoral Officer. Those are fundamental to your concerns. Absolutely. Would people, do you fear that some voters could be disenfranchised, as you said? I think there is the prospect for that, and uh, Monsieur Marand has, uh, has echoed that view as well. Um, in the Northwest Territories, to take an example, we know that in uh, 27 of 33 communities in the Northwest Territories, fewer than 50% of people hold uh, active uh, government issue photo identification. So those are individuals that need to rely on other documents in order to prove their identity and their residence. Um, in small communities like that, um, those documents aren't always readily available to individuals, and it's not always something that's top of mind for those people up until, say, the day before or the day of polling, and that may be too late to obtain that documentation. All right, hang in there, Mr. Brock. I, I want to bring in the MPs. Mr. Calandra, you're, you're listening to Mr. Brock from the Northwest Territories. The Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Archer from British Columbia, had very similar concerns. Mr. Myron, the Chief Electoral Officer, uh, for Canada, Elections Canada now has a whole list of concerns from vouching to independence, and we've gone through those. Uh, today, Mr. Uh, Jean-Pierre Kingsley also testified. Let me just show you what he had to say. The Chief Electoral Officer must retain the authority to reach out to all Canadians to speak to them about our electoral democracy, the importance of our constitutional right to vote, and the methods and the values at the core of our electoral system. Mr. Calando, when you're getting this kind of pushback, is the government open to amending this act? Well, look, uh, I mean, the committee still has uh, a lot of work to do. I don't serve on that committee, but I know they have a lot of witnesses still to, uh, to hear from, uh, and the hearings will go on, I suspect, uh, uh, a little while longer, and uh, at that point, then uh, uh, amendments will be entertained uh, uh, from, uh, I suspect, that the opposition will have amendments uh, that they will want to bring forward, and we'll take a look at them at that time. Well, right, well, can you send us a signal then? And I know you're not on the committee, but you're here to speak to Canadians about it, Mr. Klandra. 
can you send us a signal on the vouching issue? Now, when you're talking on the independence, is the government open to amendments when they're hearing so much pushback across the country? Yeah. Uh, Evan, when you talk about vouching, a lot of uh, discussion surrounding vouching has, uh, has surrounded uh, rural Canada. Look, a vast majority of rural Canada is actually represented by conservative members of parliament. Uh, and in, the, in our discussions on this, so, uh, we've decided that, uh, uh, that it is important to guarantee fair, uh, honest uh, elections. Uh, uh, the, the Fair Elections Act brings forward, as we said, 39 pieces of ID. I know uh, Mr. Brock uh, mentioned that one of them has to be a photo ID. That's not the case. Uh, the Fair Elections Act also uh, does allow political parties the opportunity to, uh, uh, to discuss in advance with the chief electoral officer uh, if there should be things that should be included. Uh, if there are other pieces of ID that need to be included to ensure that uh, the elections are done fair, uh, it's in the act. It but but, hang in, but I think the fundamental, the fundamental concern here is not just which piece of ID, and I know that's the, one of the elements, but the fundamental concern is, as Mr. Meron and Mr. Neufeld told me, has been that in an effort to crack down on voter fraud for which both gentlemen don't believe really exists, they say it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist, you risk disenfranchising over 100,000 Canadians from voting. What's your response to that? Uh, again, as I just said, uh, a vast majority of vouching is done in rural Canada. A vast majority of rural Canada is represented by conservative members care. of parliament. It will impact our members of parliament, I suspect, more than anybody else. Uh, but, but so are you accepting forward, that they're going to be disenfranchised well, and you're just putting a, a no, party color on it? Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, we're giving uh, uh, Canadians the opportunity to, uh, uh, as we said, there's 39 pieces of identification. If more identification needs to be added to the list, political parties, uh, have an opportunity in advance of an election to reach out to the uh, uh, election uh, chief electoral officer to review that. That's part of, uh, of the legislation. Uh, the, nowhere does it say that one of these pieces of ID has to be uh, uh, a photo ID. Okay, we but need I to just, add, just if, before look, I get to the other piece, to the are, are you concerned though when you hear Jean-Pierre Kingsley, Harry Neufeld, Mr. Brock, uh, Mr. Archer, across the provinces, uh, over 100 academics, when they say Canadians will be disenfranchised, I don't, I'm not saying what party they're from, they're Canadians, they have the yep. right to vote. Are you concerned about that? Uh, I'm concerned uh, uh, on, a number of, uh, on a number of levels. Uh, a, we have to make sure that Canadians have uh, the right identification. I don't want anybody to be disenfranchised. Anybody who has the right to vote should be able to vote. Uh, but at the same time, we have to make sure that the people who are casting that ballot actually have the right to vote in the Canadian election. I think that's fundamental to our democratic system, mm. that, uh, that people uh, actually casting a ballot have the actual right to cast that ballot. Uh, and if, uh, if, if that requires ID, then you know what? Yes, I'm supportive of, uh, of a system that requires people to show or to prove who they are. If we need to look at expanding the pieces of ID to better reflect certain circumstances either in the Northwest Territories uh, or in other parts of rural Canada, then we can do that. The legislation provides a mechanism right. to do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Christopherson and Mr. Lammer, you're, you're listening to this. Uh, you listened to uh, testimony at committee today. Mr. Christopherson, uh, what's your view now? Well, i, I got to tell you, Evan, this is rapidly becoming the theater of the absurd. Uh, virtually every expert in every province and every territory and international experts that have commented on this bill have said that it's going to disenfranchise Canadians, that it's going to weaken the electoral system that we have, and that it's a bad bill. The only ones, the only ones that are saying this is an improvement other than a few minor changes that everyone can agree with, but on the big pieces, the only ones that say this is an improvement are the Conservatives. Now, it starts out with the opposition, and of course, you know, the media kind of listens, well, we'll see what the media, but Evan, you have to admit, virtually every expert, I'm not aware of anybody who's prepared to put their professional reputation on the line in support of the bill, but we've got hundreds of professionals that are prepared to put their on, reputation on, on the no, line. And I, but is there any part of the bill that they could amend that would make you happy? If the vouching was changed, would that be enough for you? No, it wouldn't be enough. It, would it be a good start? Possibly. But if that's all they do, no. 
Uh, I mean, in a practical sense, Evan, sure, it can be amended to be fixed, but the kind of amendments that need to be made are so dramatic as to change the actual intent of the bill. Now, if, if they want to do that to avoid embarrassment or something, fine, we'll go down that road. But a little bit of tinkering here and there is not going to give us a bill that we can support. No. Mr. Lamoureux, uh, Mr. Polievra, the Minister of State in charge of democratic reform and this bill, has said, okay, there are some amendments he seems open to, Section 18, which has to go with the... Uh, the kind of public consultation and access to the public for the chief electoral officer. Uh, in your view, after listening to the witnesses today, are those possible amendments enough? I just don't trust them. That's the bottom line. You know, I'd add to David's comments. When he says the Conservative Party is the only one that actually supports the legislation, I don't even think there's members, all members of the Conservative Party would support this. I believe it's the Prime Minister. Well, how do you know that? Well, are you, are you speculating? Well, because I'm, I'm speculating here because at the end of the day, you just got to apply common sense here, Evan. You have all sorts of apolitical organizations, academics, lay people that are saying this is bad legislation. It's only the prime minister in his office. It's and poor Paul. He has to defend. He has to defend uh, this uh, this uh, ordeal. At the end of the day, what we're looking at is just bad legislation. As uh, Mr. Trudeau has said, it's time to pull this legislation. When well, you, you say withdraw it, but hang in there. I mean, yep. look, it was opposition parties that after the robocalls issue and the Pierre Poutine That's issue, right. you wanted some yeah, this, kind of reform. But Evan, this what about an amendment? Yeah, but this legislation is going to weaken our laws. It's going to prevent us from being able to get to the truth and get the prosecutions that are necessary. This is something that's well established. Not, you know, and this isn't coming from the Liberal Party. This is coming from independent election authorities. Not one, not two, but a number right. of election authorities. At the end of the day, this legislation does not deserve to see the light of the day. And the only way it's going to be uh, fixed is that we'd have to have the, the minister responsible come before the committee and just say, look, I've screwed up and it's time that we over overhaul the legislation. In that sort of a situation, then we might be able to salvage okay. something. Um, I'll give you 10 seconds here to Mr. Kalander. You know what the opposition wants. You've heard the criticism. Uh, what are the chances that after all this criticism and after listening to testimony of the committee, that this bill that I'm holding in my hand, that you don't just amend it, you withdraw it? Uh, zero chance, uh, Evan. Uh, uh, listen, uh, there are, the minister has uh, signaled that there would be some amendments. You know what is actually quite sad is uh, the two opposition parties, one in particular, filibustered for uh, no. uh, a number of hours to try and get this to committee. And now we're hearing uh, that before they can even introduce amendments, that they don't even want to entertain amendments. They just want to withdraw the it's bill entirely. It's an I think that's, uh, uh, that's they, a sad To be fair, Mr. Calandra, uh, they wanted the committee to travel absolutely. across the country to hear from Canadians. And now they're saying that they don't even, uh, they just want the bill withdrawn completely. Forget about uh, hearing from Canadians. Just withdraw the bill completely. Because you're not going to amend it, Paul. And don't You've already for, decided further. what you're going to do. This is a Harper How bill. Did, well, now you know on. why they didn't want to go to the Yellowknife, because we just heard from the Northwest Territories Chief Electoral Officer, and they're going to expand uh, vouching to ensure Canadians uh, have the right to vote. This is a government that's uh, taking away and, vouching and, and, you and said, taking away the right of Canadians you, to vote. It's not just the vouching. And it's, you said we wouldn't hear from the people of Yellowknife, but yet we did. Get witnesses to come Imagine that. Hell, them to testify. It's the ability of the Elections Canada to be able to communicate uh, democracy to Canadians. It's far more than just vouching, even though vouching in itself has to be changed. All right, uh, hang on. I want the last word to go to Mr. Brock as you're listening to uh, Parliament Hill. This is obviously a, a hotly debated issue. Here you are. You obviously you've come down to Ottawa, where I know you used to live, from Yellowknife. You're listening to the political debate. If you have to send a message from your point of view, Chief Electoral Officer in Northwest Territories, as the debate, what's your message to the government on this bill? The message from me would be a recognition that to preserve the integrity of the electoral system, we have to balance uh, access for electors to the right to cast their vote with uh, the integrity and security of the system. All election laws are a balance between those two. My concern is that some of the provisions in this bill uh, go too far towards um, potentially restricting uh, or removing the right of some individuals to be able to uh, cast a vote, and that is a fundamental right in Canada. Uh, would you amend it, withdraw it and scrap it, or pass it as is? Uh, I've provided uh, uh, specific recommendations to the committee for amendment, and, uh, and I hope uh, those recommendations are duly considered. You know, one of the things that has become a political issue uh, has been just grading it. People are trying to say, is this a good bill or a bad bill? If you had to give it a grade as a bill, what would you give it? Uh, I, I wouldn't know uh, how to, how to pl provide a, a grade to a bill. Uh, again, uh, my hope is that um, 
that the but would you recommendations, agree with that A-? my hope is that the recommendations that are made to committee are taken seriously by the committee and eventually that the report from the committee is taken seriously by the government and perhaps more importantly that our election law in this country and in all our provinces and territories is built on as broad a consensus as possible but you would you agree with john pierre kingsley it's an a minus uh, I'll leave it to Mr. Kingsley to grade the bill. I gotta leave it there. Chief Electoral Officer from the Northwest Territories, David Brock, good to have you here, sir.